gonna jump to something else. Hold on. No, pause. There we go. Okay. Um, good morning. Happy, what is it, Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. Happy middle of the week. Uh, in order to get you through to the middle of the week, I got a sweet one today. Uh, it comes from 1 Corinthians 13. You might recognize it. You probably will. Um, but I thought it was a nice thing to revisit. Uh, since it's uh, it's an important word, and it's an important concept uh, to not misunderstand. Uh, and it's an important concept to let linger in us, in all that we do. So, I may have even read this before, but whatever. First Corinthians uh, 13. Oh, by the way, this comes after sort of a whole long discussion about gifts of the Spirit, which is like speaking in tongues, prophecy, uh, uh, teaching, you know, etc. Uh, healing. Miracles, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but, he says, in a way, Paul says, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, you may have heard that read at weddings or whatever, or it's, shoot, it's on greeting cards and they're like, uh, and it's lovely and all, it's very like, oh, that's a good reminder to us that love is very important, and it's it's a very nice thing. Um, and it is and it isn't. <laughs> it, uh, love is a beautiful thing. Love is a wonderful thing. There's lots of good songs written about it. Uh, but the love speaking about here, if you really take a, a good examination reading what it's actually saying, is no easy la-la-la love. This is, this is like... This is brutal love. This is warrior love. This is, if you look at the love uh, that God has shown, if you look at, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's some brutal love there. I mean, that's a love that takes the scourges for our backs and takes the murder that our very nature demands 
That's a love that like sheds mercy over justice. This is a love that like does not is not provoked, thinks no evil. And the trick this one, this one I was kind of alluding to maybe even a couple days ago. I was just thinking about it. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Now it's a double dead sword here because we are called to be salt of this earth. We are called to persevere, to strive against that which sits within us that would that would that would be the cause of God's sacrifice. That would that iniquity, that sin within us, that darkness within us, that that puffed up self, that rude self, that that evil self. And the love we are given is despite that, is despite who we are. That the love of God is is meant to be the love that we are, we seek here to emulate. That goes against logic, goes against reason. Knowledge, it says, will vanish away. We are meant to love, again, we are meant to love God, first and foremost. Love our neighbor as ourself. Love our enemy. And there may be somewhere fourth and fifth on that list. You can go ahead and love yourself. <laughs> because I think, actually, there's a, there's a brutal and beautiful understanding of God's love that we don't deserve love, really. But we're given it nonetheless. In many ways, I think a lot of us feel unworthy. Some of us struggle with it more than others. And I have found a delicious freedom in agreeing with that. That indeed, I am unworthy. I am unworthy of love. But better than that, I have it anyway. I've been given love by the creator of the universe, by the, the purpose giver of my life. By the, the Lord and Master, the heavenly king who's whose glory is uh, is my duty to pursue and to, to glorify in and to add to in any way that he sees fit to let me add to it or help me add to it or make me add to it. And one of the ways you can do so, add to the glory of God, is in love, rejoicing in truth, love as a true friend, which again, isn't all la la la, whatever you do is great and I love you. I don't know, there are things we do that are total scumbagness. It doesn't mean you remove love. You still speak in love. But truth is involved in love uh, fundamentally. If you've ever had a genuine love relationship, you know how uh, incisive <laughs> uh, love can be. So let, and the love of God is the same way. Man, it lays bare, it lays open many wounds it illuminates many dark places and yet perseveres through that and beyond that so let us just emulate that sort of love that is not only unceasing and wildly illogical and doesn't wait for recompense can stand on its own feet and that is one of of truth that speaks truth that doesn't, love is not a love that loves iniquity. Love is not a love that loves damage that you do to yourself or that you do to others. But love is the love that loves you and the best for you. And love is the love that propagates more love. That's what I'm thinking anyway. First Corinthians 13. Amen. Selah.